college football playoff set. We've got a one through four now. There's no more speculation or debate. It is fact. And it's fact that Michigan's our number one seed. It is fact that we're going to see down in New Orleans, Washington as the two seed, play Texas as the three seed, and we go out to Pasadena where it's Alabama in the four seed and not FSU and not Georgia and not Ohio State or anyone else. I'm stunned by uh, several things that I've seen and heard today. Uh, but the most stunning thing that happened in this entire selection process, the buildup for, for weeks now, the buildup and then today the culmination was it didn't sort itself out. It's the first time I've ever seen that in the college football playoff era. I admitted to you last week that that was really the first time I had dug into any resume. It was the, it was, it was the first time I dug into any resume. It was the first time I had looked at most of the stuff that a lot of you who are fans of this look at every week. It's not because I didn't care. It's just because I've learned that the stuff is going to sort itself out and come Selection Sunday, you won't have a mess on your hands like you think you're going to around Halloween or the second week in November. It didn't sort itself out. It sure didn't. Now, because of that, I think the committee stepped in it big time. But I'm not talking about who they put in the four seed. I'll talk about that in a second. The committee stepped in it because I firmly believe they had baked their assumptions and they had baked their expectations into their rankings. Case in point, Oregon went into last weekend ranked above Texas and ranked above Alabama. Oregon should not have been ranked above either of those if you went on pure resume. You will never convince me that that committee ranked Oregon above those two teams just based on resume. What I believe is that that committee, whether consciously or subconsciously, had already started to think to themselves, Oregon's better than Washington. Oregon's going to beat Washington. So they started treating them accordingly. Conversely, they may have thought, Bama's going to be an underdog to Georgia. And so they treated Alabama accordingly. The resumes alone would have had that thing totally inverted. Well, as is usually the case, you've got this stuff, and then you have real football, real life. And sometimes the results don't match your expectations. And when it happens and the committee is already baking that sort of thing in, oh, you open yourself up to all sorts of things that have never happened before that could happen. Why? Because you changed your protocols. Anytime you change the protocol or the modus operandi for any system or anything, you're bound to get some unprecedented results. Think about this. If you don't think what I'm saying is true, and if you don't think that my warning to you last week was true, when I told you Bill Hancock had set in motion something that was dangerous, Think about this. Let me remind you what I'm talking about there. Hancock goes on the record last week, executive director of the playoff committee, and, and voluntarily just says, oh, we don't care about most deserving. No, in fact, his words were, most deserving is not a phrase in our lexicon. We care about putting the best teams in. Now, that's BS. I told you that then. I'm going to tell you that now. Again, it flies in the face of what they've actually done in years past, as recently as last year. They didn't put the four best teams in. Okay, so that's not been what they've actually done. But when he said that last week, you may have noticed I made a really big deal about it on the show because I knew what was coming or I thought I had a pretty good idea of what they were doing. They were positioning for a just-in-case and the just-in-case happened. And that just-in-case was Georgia doesn't win the SEC and Bama does and we understand what we have on our hands. And if we got to go Bama against an undefeated Florida State head-to-head, -head, we need to make sure that we're on the record. We need to make sure we dust off this little bullet point over here which says that we're in the business of putting the best teams in. Well, that's not the way they've done things. And also, they haven't always baked in their expectations to their rankings. And they did this year. And that's why Bama was all the way down at the eight spot. And Oregon was all the way up in the number six spot, even though Bama's resume was better than Oregon's. If you don't think what I'm saying is true, and you think it was just business standard as usual, tell me this. What happened yesterday what chaotic thing happened yesterday on the field? Nothing. Uh, Washington, as an underdog, beat Oregon Friday night, but that didn't change anything. The net result was you got a Pac-12 team in, which you already thought you'd get. Michigan won in the least chaotic way imaginable. Texas won in the least chaotic way imaginable. You had an upset on the field in Atlanta, and all that should have meant, maybe at the most, was a different SEC team goes other than Georgia, the favorite won the ACC championship game. So what craziness happened? The answer is no craziness happened. 
And yet we had three things happen today that have never happened before. You had two teams that were ranked below number six jump into the playoff. We've never had one of them do that before. We had two of them do that today in the final rankings. You had an undefeated Power 5 conference champ left out. You've never had it before. You had number one fall all the way out of the top four. You've never had it happen on Selection Sunday, and yet all three of them happened. You don't believe me when I tell you their protocols changed and their mode of operation changed? Explain that to me. So that's the first thing. The second thing is they dropped Florida State to five, despite the fact that they won their conference and they're undefeated and they're a Power Five conference champ. Uh, there was no right path here. There was no right path. I thought you could see that coming from a mile away that if we kept training headlong towards this cliff and no one hit the brakes, or in this case, no one lost, we were going to have a mess on our hands. I've heard Mike Norvell's statement on this. I've heard Jordan Travis's statement on this. I've heard Jim Phillips, the commissioner of the ACC, statement on this. None of them are wrong. None of them are wrong. And yet I think the committee made the right decision. Now, I'm the one who sat here a couple of weeks ago and told you, if Florida State goes undefeated, you can't leave them out. And I still feel that way. So how could I possibly think that the committee made the right decision or the correct decision? I want to word this very purposefully. How can I feel the committee made the correct decision if I also feel like Florida State should have been in? The answer is there's no right decision. There is no right path. There were, there were a couple of wrong paths here. And that's why I'm merely saying I thought they made the correct decision. Now, here's what I don't care about. Now, I want to really peel back the layers slowly here. I don't care that there's never been an undefeated Power 5 champ left out, okay? That's, that's not criteria. Like, that's not a, a data point per se. That's just a thing. That's just a bullet point on a one sheet that they hand you before you go on air so you'll sound intelligent when you're talking. It, it, it's just because no set of circumstances unique enough has presented itself. And by the way, we're not 100 years into this thing. So when you tell me so-and-so or such a thing has never happened and we're only talking about something 10 years old, I don't care. It's like, um, like Uncle Bruce has never come to family reunion. Well, we've had three of them. So it's not like that's some long-held trend or long-standing trend. I, I will grant you the point that it's unprecedented. I never cared about that. What I cared about is, should Florida State be in or not? So I'm, I'm watching along with the rest of you last night. I stood on the field for the SEC championship game. I watched Florida State's game afterwards. It's very clear there's a different caliber of football being played. However, I am fully on board with anyone who tells me results on the field should matter. You know I fight for that all the time. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a second because that's an argument a lot of people are making, and I'll, I'll give you my two cents on it. I have I've thought about it a lot, obviously, and I... Um, I am of the opinion that I don't like when a committee of people starts to think that they know the value of a football player. And that's what happened here with Jordan Travis. And no one's even pretending that isn't what happened. The chair of the playoff committee said, hey, they're a different team without Jordan Travis, which translates to had they had their quarterback healthy or had they just lied about his status and pretended he'd be back for the playoff, you're probably in the playoff. That, that's true. No one's, no one's debating that. I told you when this happened. I wasn't interested in hearing anyone uh, assignate value on Jordan Travis because you don't know what he's worth. No one does. Secondly, I think it should be noted, Florida State did not duck competition this year. They scheduled LSU at the beginning of the season, and they beat them. They go, they go to or they play against Florida every year, and they beat them. Uh, they had to go on the road to Clemson in a conference game. They beat them. And so they went wire to wire undefeated. I, I know as much as I can know how hard that is. So every complaint I heard from FSU folks, I just sat there in silence because you're right about it all. You got screwed. You got screwed. Had Bama been left out, they would also have been screwed. There was no right decision here. No right way to go. I think, you know, what's crazy is um, Michigan was able to completely dodge even the slightest whiff of anyone suggesting they should be out because of the off the field stuff. Uh, this this fall and I don't I didn't traffic in it like I think Michigan should be in I'm just saying when all this stuff got thrown into the tumbler there were people that were talking about whether Texas should be in there were obviously people talking about whether Bama should be in Georgia should be in FSU should be in and no one 
to my knowledge, maybe a few on the fringe, but largely no one, to my knowledge, talked about Michigan. I, like many of you, had mixed reactions and mixed emotions about this because I could easily sit here if I wanted to and present the argument for Florida State. I could present the argument for Alabama. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, if I have a ballot, those are the teams I'm putting in, and they put them in in the order I would put them in. So let's go through the reactions to that. The first reaction that's been real common today is, oh, this thing's rigged, man. This thing's rigged. Well, it's not. I don't believe that. Oh, it's, it's a made-for-TV spectacle. Well, it is made-for-TV. It is made-for-TV. But the allegation that oh, this is just WWE on grass. <laughs> why, why should we even bother competing? This stuff's all rigged. It's not. It's not. And I'll tell you why I think that that's largely a pinata of an argument that you can beat down pretty easily. I agree with the rankings. I think they got the proper four in. I don't, own, I don't own a TV network. I don't work for ESPN. CBS doesn't even have the rights to these games. So how do I hold that logic? Am I just completely like out in left field? Or could it be, and hear me out now, could it be that you have your feelings, I have my feelings, we differ, but both are grounded in some pretty sound logic and it just had to go A or B and it ended up going A and you happen to be B in this path. Could it be that? It's not rigged. If it is, then explain to me how, how in the world a, a completely reasonable person could agree with the outcome who has no vested interest in it. Like, I have, no, I have no interest financially or otherwise in the outcome of this. I'd love to see good games. But even I've told you, I'm not owed that. Like in the past, last year, last year, some people wanted to keep TCU out of the playoff because they rightly suggested TCU is going to end up getting blown out and it's going to be a boring TV product. I thought they were right in their assumption, but they were wrong in their logic. That's not the reason you keep a team out. You keep a team out if you think there's someone who deserves to go more. It's not Burger King. You don't get to pull up an order from the value menu and, and put together a perfect combination of things you want. It's not an on-demand playoff, in other words. And I don't think that's the way it's structured. I truly don't. You can disagree with me on that. But I truly don't, because I agree with what the committee did. I'm not in on it, as far as I know. The second thing, overwhelmingly, the second thing, uh, and an argument that a lot of people are making right now is, well, if this is the outcome we're going to get, if a Power 5 conference champ went undefeated and they got left out, why even play the games? No one guaranteed you that just because you play the games, it'll be controversy-free at the end of the day. And secondly, they played a game in Atlanta last night, too. Like, a lot of teams played a lot of games. It's all baked into the cake. And thirdly, competition did matter. I'll tell you why you play the games, to get the outcome on the field, to get the outcome. Like, they played a game at Jordan-Hare Stadium last week, and Bama ends up miraculously beating Auburn. If they don't convert, then that game matters, and Florida State's probably in the playoff. Uh, th the point is, the outcomes during the competitively based games are all baked into the equation. No one guaranteed you just because you play games, it'll mean at the end of the day, you know, dust is settled and it's as clear as day who should be in. No, that's not the way it's always going to work. In fact, it's pretty shocking to me. It's worked out as cleanly as it has for as long as it has. We hadn't had a situation like this. We, we have never had a situation like this in 10 years. Um, so why play the games because if Alabama had lost another one, they wouldn't be in here. If Florida State had lost a game, they wouldn't have even been in the conversation. Uh, I could say this about if, if Kansas State would have beaten Texas Tech in that down-to-the-wire game, Florida State would be taking Texas's place maybe right now. Or we'd be having the argument about whether Bama and their head-to-head -head loss against Texas matters if Texas got one more loss than them. The outcomes did matter. It's just that the fact that you went undefeated wasn't the end-all be-all because of the unique set of circumstances around you. There's another pretty widely held assumption right now in that this is a dangerous precedent for the playoff committee to set. Well, I'd agree with you guys, actually, because I do not like the reasoning why Florida State was left out. Don't like it. Hate it, actually. Strong word, but I hate it. I hate a committee or I hate any person telling me, no, I, I know the point value of this football player and I know, therefore, how good this team is now. And if you remove him, 
they're, they're not good enough. I don't like that. If they lose on the field, I'll accept it, but otherwise I don't like that. However, they're not setting any precedent. It doesn't matter. So like school's out tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you misbehave today. They're not putting you in detention. Summer break starts tomorrow. And in college football, it's the last year of a four-teamer. Uh, there will never be an argument moving forward. I don't care what you tell me that is this heated because in the future, I'll be able to look you in the eye and say, number one, I'm not about to listen to you threaten to boycott a sport because you got denied the 13 seed or the 12 seed or the 11 seed. Because in the future... I'll be able to look at any resume of any team that thinks they got screwed out of one of the last seats at the table, and it'll have multiple flaws on it. The hardest part about this is there's no flaw on FSU's resume. Every other time someone got screwed or thought they got screwed, you could look at them. If Bama got left out this year, you could say to them, you should have beaten Texas. Now, that's a, that's a stiff standard, but you could say, you guys should have beaten Texas. What are you going to say to Florida State? Your quarterback shouldn't have broken his leg? They haven't lost a game. Uh, that's the hardest part to fathom, for me included, about this whole thing. So it's over is the point. After this year, it's the, it's the last year. I think the committee had less incentive than ever to stick to any kind of rigid standard or protocol with this. But the other thing that was thrown about pretty loosely and I think irrationally, but of course I grew up in the South, so I know some of you will disagree, is well, this was just SEC bias. This was the SEC uh, pulling Alabama like a helium balloon to the top of the heap at the 11th hour. Maybe it was. I think there's some Alabama bias built in too. Bias is always spoken in a pejorative context. And in many cases, bias is a totally legitimate thing to think about something that's been consistent in providing the same result over and over and over again. I have Bama bias. I got a pro-Bama bias on this show a lot. I give blind benefit of the doubt to that program a lot. I give blind benefit of the doubt to the SEC a lot. I have pro-SEC bias on this show a lot. You may think to yourself, oh, he's got it. He'll just never admit it. I just did. You need to hear it again. Rewind. I just told you I do. But there's a reason why I do. I got some Oklahoma bias when it comes to softball. Why? Because Patty, uh, Patty Gasso just laps the field every year, or it seems that way. And so I'll give her benefit of the doubt. They're going to play UCLA or Alabama or someone like that. I'll give her benefit of the doubt. Why? Because she's proven. I didn't know that I was going to go down the Patty Gasso route tonight, but she's proven. She also earned seven figures a year as a softball coach, which is wild. Hats off to Patty Gasso. But in, uh, in college football, you're absolutely right. There's a little voice in the back of my head that gives benefit of the doubt to the SEC, and especially Georgia or Alabama, if they're the SEC team in the equation. Let me ask you a follow-up question. Why wouldn't I have that? Like, who in their right mind wouldn't have that? Do you think the sport has a reset button where we hit it every spring and everything just returns to neutral? That's, that's not th – that, that conference still laps you in recruiting every year. That conference come NFL draft time laps you every year. Now, that's not the end-all, be-all, and that's not definitive evidence that an Alabama belongs in over a Florida state, but if you think it doesn't matter or it shouldn't matter, I just disagree with you. I'm not going to call you dumb or stupid or crazy. I just disagree with you. If, if I'm looking at a 50-50 proposition, something's got to break a tie, and I think there are a lot more short-sighted things to use than that. And the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is let's just say it went the other direction. So you're, some of you are upset about Florida State being left out. I'm right there with you, even as I think the proper decision was made. I get it. Like, there's, there's no right path here, and so it sucks for Florida State, and it's very raw. Uh, I'll speak more about this in the coming days because I got some strong thoughts about how, you know what, never mind, forget about the coming days. I'm going to tell you right now, this is about to be a good thing for Florida State long term. It is not fun today, and I'm not trying to cheer you up or turn that frown upside down or anything like that, but you mark my words, it is going to be a good thing long term for Florida State that they got left out of the playoff today. This is going to be a bastardized quote. It's going to be miscontextualized, and someone's going to call it stupid and not have a clue what I'm trying to say. Lock in for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds here. I am telling you, they got left out today, and it's not fun for anyone. They would have gone to the playoff, and it is my opinion, they would have gotten humbled on the field. But they're not going to the playoff. You think that's a bad thing. Just like UCF folks in 2017, they thought it was the end of the world. They didn't make the playoff. Not making the 2017 college football playoff was the best thing to ever happen 
to UCF athletics. Now, FSU is not trying to establish itself as an entity in college sports. They've long since done that. But I am asking you, what happens if you go to the playoff? Florida State wasn't going to win the national title. So what you were going to have was a net result of what you have right now. You were going to have an ACC championship, an undefeated regular season, and then you would have had a loss on your resume in the playoffs. You would have been able to say you went to the playoffs. Here's what's a lot more important for you. You're going to be able until the end of the time to say you got screwed this year, like Auburn in 04. No one can ever take your assumptions away or your speculation away because we didn't see it on the field. You can go around for all I care and tell folks you would have beaten everyone in the playoff. No one beat you in the regular season. Feel free. But here's what else you're going to do. You're going to be able to package a ton of equity up from this. You're going to be able to convince your organization from now in the foreseeable future that the entire world is out to get you. It, it does wonders to bake in a bunker mentality into the culture of a program when you can sell kids on that and you can sell staffers on that and nutrition and strength and conditioning and recruiting and personnel. You sell all those folks on the idea that Hey, even our best one year wasn't good enough. So you know what in the future we're going to do? In the future, we're going to salt the earth entirely. We are going to lay waste to whoever lines up against us. And we're going to leave no doubt. Because if we leave it in the hands of a committee of people, you've seen what's going to happen. Mike Norvell doesn't even have to pretend. He doesn't have to do like Kirby did last year and convince his kids. Someone convinced Georgia, thought Georgia was going to go 7-5. and five. People actually did screw Florida State this year. And the other thing, and this is what I'm focused on with Florida State is, while today sucks because you got left out of the playoff, do you realize the most important question in Tallahassee, Florida, has been definitively answered? And that is, do you have the right head coach? You don't have to ask that anymore. Mike Norvell's the man. Mike Norvell's a stud. Mike Norvell is going to have Florida State here for a long time, not going anywhere. They're ranked in the top five in recruiting right now. I don't think there's any program that's put on a better portal clinic than Mike Norvell and his staff. It's obvious even when they lose their quarterback, it's still going to be like crawling over broken glass to beat them. A Mike Norvell program moving forward is something we don't have to doubt anymore. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to speculate. The guy's a stud. He's the real deal. And for a long time, you didn't have the ability to say that at Florida State. So, no, it's not fun to get left out. I'm not telling you anything otherwise. It's going to be raw. You, you peel that Band-Aid off, and it's going to hurt for a little while. Mark my words, Florida State will benefit from this down the road a lot more than they would have benefited had they actually made the playoff. And I know that's unpopular to say today, uh, but I think it's reality. One more thing that I want to draw your attention to, and that is what happens when you include Alabama in the playoff. So, what I was going to ask you a second ago before I sidetracked my own self irresponsibly was pretend for a second they put FSU in today. So you got Michigan, you got Washington, you got Texas, and you got FSU. How would you have felt about that playoff? I'm not talking to Florida State fans. I'm talking about uh, agnostic fans, just innocent bystanders. How, how would you have felt? Because I'm telling you, I think it would have been an incomplete playoff. I would have thought it to be a little invalidated if you didn't have Georgia or Alabama in there. Even if you don't admit that publicly, there is a part of you that understands, I mean, yeah, Texas won it, or Washington won it, or whoever won it, but they didn't have to go through the best of the SEC to do it. Uh, that's the way my mind operates. Now, you may not believe that, but it's true. A hundred percent of people inside football buildings and programs understand where the best reside. And to go through and legitimately win a championship, they understand you're probably going to need to go through Bama or Georgia. And if either of those programs are taken out of your path, someone on that committee has done you a huge favor. Now, I've always suggested that on this show, and I've gotten ridicule. Luckily, someone was at the University of Michigan today rolling when Reese Davis and the crew there at ESPN was revealing the top four. So they revealed number one, number two, number three, then they revealed who number six was. And so Michigan already knows they're locked into the one seed. And Michigan knows this next team, whoever we hear named, that's who we're going to play in the first round. Now, I am suggesting to you that they really hoped they were going to draw Florida State because they'd be a double-digit favorite against Florida State, and Michigan would probably beat Florida State. But if you don't believe me, you don't want to take my word for it, 
I want uh, Director Colin in there to cue up a piece of video, and I want you to listen to the reaction when Michigan found out they were playing Alabama. Who's number four? That's reality. That's how folks feel. Whether they want to admit it or not, whether you want to act tough on Twitter or on your local message board, folks know you face FSU in this playoff and you're going to probably be able to flex and you're certainly going to feel sky high confident about your chances. You draw that script A or if Georgia had won last night or, or if they put Georgia in, you draw that block G, you got your work cut out for you. Okay, so that's why I would have felt it was an illegitimate playoff had the SEC not been represented. I'm looking forward to it, though.